Zane, Klaus and I, we ran all the way to the top. At this point, we heard a commotion and a loud bang and some screaming. Oh my gosh, that's a sign to it! It's quite frightening because normally we don't have to worry about situations like that. Normally it's just Zane, Klaus and I. I'll beat you down, I'll beat you down. Okay, cool. The problem came in when this pool came running from nowhere. Okay. Came running straight past my dad's car. It was Zane and John Paul's fault for chasing the Eland, for deciding about it. Whose idea was it to chase an Eland through a gap that's two, three meters wide? The farmer was in the process of, I think he was trying to annihilate the uh, aspect. On this specific day, we got a call out to um, a farm. We responded to, to the client there. He's, uh, I don't know how to explain him. He's quite a, quite a tough Afrikaans guy. Doesn't take any <laughs> He owns a couple of properties next to each other. So uh, these properties he rents out to, to people. And on this specific occasion, he called us for backup because there was a domestic violence case going on. The client's wife had actually pushed her panic button and when our control room made contact with her, she was in tears and she was very worried about her husband because the husband had left to go and uh, try and stop the fighting and there were a number of drunk people at the house. So she wasn't sure what was going to happen to her husband. So she needed to get back up to her husband urgently. farmer was in the process of, I think he was trying to annihilate the uh, suspect, but I totally agree with him. A man that lifts his hands to a woman deserves to get thumped. That's quite a mess. Uh, the landlord actually took matters into his own hands. Uh, the tenant was, uh, as the landlord got there, the tenant was actually beating his wife. When I went to pull my client off, uh, off this other guy, um, he's actually a physically strong guy. He's not a little Mickey Mouse. He obviously works with his hands every day in the farmlands and that kind of stuff. So, you know, when I pulled him off, I felt his physical strength and he was trying to fight me to get to the other guy. But at the end, I managed to pull him off and separate the two. Please go inside, please go inside. The guys are out. Please go inside. Go in my house. He's going for the What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? He's wife. I'm tired of his I'm telling you now. That's pretty okay. Lost off! Near man! Come on! Hear me! You're right. I can move for the it's on the I understand. I, I, so I promise you, I'll 
don't understand. No one ever f***ing it to a woman, I understand that. Trevor, you okay? When I spoke to my client, he explained to me that uh, this happens on a, on a daily basis. Um, you know, in these circumstances with these, these kind of guys that battle to make ends meet, they drink a lot and they blame all their problems on other people and a lot of the time they take it out on their wife. You know, I've lost, I've got very much. Listen, what the f*** is going on here? Listen, brother, can, can I talk to you? Come with me, come with me. Sorry. No, no, off. No, don't take him off. I'm not off, I can sleep for him. I can sleep for him. Take him off then. Yeah. Just stay here, guys, guys. Just stay here. What the f*** is going on? You can't eat your wife, bro. We're just going to talk to him. We're just going to talk to him. Why? I don't know. We're just going to talk to him and see everything. I understand fucking life is hard and I was in there and then uh, the wife kept siding with the husband. She's like, no, he didn't mean to, it was by mistake and everything like that. So I, I don't agree with this. If you get hit by your husband, leave though. Don't stick around because he's just going to continue doing it. What the f is going on? You can't hit your wife, bro. What the f no, yeah, but why? You can't do the woman. You need to calm down. No, I, mean, I understand life right. is hard and it happens, but you need to what just happened? calm down, sort it out. Yeah. You know, we can't yeah. be coming out to scenes like this. But I had a day. I don't know what drives them to uh, to beat their wives or, or what drives them to uh, drink and then beat their wives, especially in front of their children. You know, you know, maybe these guys need to learn a life lesson. I don't know. I don't know. You know what, you, you need to just relax, calm down, you can't come home because you had a day at work and do the We out there looking for criminals and drug dealers and all that I understand you got a tough scene going on here, but you need to just calm down, brother. But there's not even food, bro. Yeah, I understand, bro. It's a tough situation, bro. He tried to tell me there's no food on the table. It's quite funny that there's no food on the table, but there's money for booze. In this situation, I'm quite happy the husband got a bit of a smack. Maybe he got a life lesson. You know, I feel dreadfully sorry for that child having to witness her father beating her mother up. But you know, in, in situations like this, um, when we leave and we start chatting about it, we feel dreadfully sorry mostly for the kid. I mean, as an adult, you make your own choices, but as a kid, you have no choices. And uh, you love your parents regardless. And I hope at the end of the day this, this father learns something and he actually pulls his finger out of his ass and decides to make something of his life instead of being a bum. My family has a game farm. It's up in the Waterberg Mountains. It's an awesome place. Molly and myself went to scout the fence. I decided to push on towards the backpack fence. Molly, you got your gun? Always got my gun, bro. Yeah, because there have been some leopard spotted here and you look juicy. <laughs> so shoot it more than once. <laughs>
looked back to how far we had gone, we realized uh, how far it was that we had left my dad in the vehicle. So we're going around in the circle, around the circle, like the circle of the houses there. You should not inform. No, no, but I'm saying the, this mountain range bends like that. So we're following the top around like that. Okay. So you want to grab the car and I'll cruise down here. I'll ching chong cha you. Okay. Ching chong cha. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I decided to go back to the vehicle and Moody thought it would be a good idea to hike back down through the ravine. He thought he would honestly beat me on time by hiking down through the ravine. If you hike down here, you're going to be deep in the valley. You're gonna, it's going to take an hour to hike out again. That's cool. I decided to push on towards the backpack fence. So I pushed on through there just to check that the fence is okay and back down into the valley. Then JP could, could grab the car and come fetch me. Buddy, you got your gun? Yeah, always got my gun, bro. Yeah, because there have been some leopard spots at you and you look juicy. Bro, even if I shoot a leopard with this gun, it's just going to it off. <laughs> so shoot it more than once. <laughs> my sharp navigation skills and my keen sense of direction got me back down to the Jeep on time. Dad, what is trying to beat us down the mountain by hiking? And my dad and I were on the way back down in no time. I always like to take a walk around the boundary fence to just check that our farm work is actually checking the fence just to see that it's always up to standard. Poaching is rough in South Africa. We've got guys coming into the farm, putting snares, tying it to trees, tying it to your fences. So it is crazy with the, the amount of poaching that goes on, especially the rhino poaching that is rough also in South Africa for the trade of the rhino horn, which is, is quite scary. I mean, my neighbor behind us on the farm, he had three of his rhino poached also. They came in all AK-47s, about 15 of the guys came in and just mowed them down. We were navigating down the rocky path in uh, record time when all of a sudden there was a roadblock. I'm gonna ask you, you crazy bird, what you doing here? <laughs> Come on, move it. Come on. Oscar is another one of the wild family pets of the Eblins. Uh, Oscar was an ostrich that got left behind by her mom. Unfortunately, we were new in the ostrich game back then, so we didn't know how to sex the bird properly, hence her name, Oscar. I underestimated how long it would take me to get back to, to the shooting range, um, but I, I managed to check the whole fence coming down into the valley. Oh, the hike. Yes, that's Mule! Awesome. How was Joe? 45 minutes later, Muli arrives to find us unstressed. We were just chilling in the African sun. I had a nice heart to heart with my dad the day before Father's Day. So all in all, it was good for us. Awesome, bro. You about 45 minutes late. And the car would wash up. Mm. What's just that garlic pee Or crushed garlic, yes. salt, quite a bit of salt. I'm the last born, so I mean, I get along with my parents both well. You know the parents, they always love the youngest. I haven't had this in long, huh? It's been a while. I like working at home in the kitchen. We cook really well together. She showed me a lot of recipes. And I just love cooking. I mean, I've got a lot of recipes. Jess, you just open for me there. What's for dinner, Bill? I uh, just ramp again and um, chicken breast, huh? Yeah, it's nice and hot. That's perfect, bro. So good, man. Guys, it's quarter past seven already and Zane's not here. Did he even get it? Yeah, I'll find him to see if I'm gonna make it dinner. Okay, don't worry, he's on his way. He's on his way, so he's fine. It's getting quite late now, you know, driving on these dark sand roads is not the best thing. My dad was quite pissed off that he was late. He missed the second dinner, the whole day, with the family. I mean, family time is quality time. You don't, you can't miss out on that. Of course, we just take us into the kitchen. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is territory again. Sure. Halfway through dinner, Zane arrives. Um, everyone's tired. Uh, uh, the kids are fast asleep. So they end up going straight to bed. The week is nearly over. I made it. I'm making it for Father's Day. It's tasty. That's all we expect. Uh, Zane's punishment for being late is that tomorrow night he's going to cook a poiki which he's going to have to sit and watch for five hours. A poiki is a traditional South African dish. It's a cast iron pot 
which uh, you cook uh, meat and vegetables and certain spices and it slow cooks over a long period. Sane's gonna have his hands full and his work cut out for him. We're working out our slaves. Bosses on holiday. <laughs> they just off having fun in the sun and I'm at home. Bored it. So I always get bullied. So what I'm gonna do is give some bully back in the office. But I'm gonna shut this thing up your <laughs> and, and <laughs> put it connected to the Doesn't take uh, jokes too well, eh? Trevor! I think it's time you get out of here. So these s say that God is a family and but I didn't get invited to the game farm. <laughs> they just off having fun in the sun and I'm at home bored and Okay, so we come to one of our complexes here in uh, Foyce just to see we had a code 3 activation, that's the electric fence. Uh, so we're just coming to see what's happening. Our reactions are ready, yeah. You guys went to the game farm this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't go with, as I usually do. Um, you know, somebody's got to hold down the fort and make sure that uh, the business runs smoothly. Hey, what's happening here? Yeah, I'm coming here to rush here to check the electric fence. What's going on here? Yeah, we've got a signal. Most of the time is activating. You got a very uh, serious signal here. Ah, uh, okay, sure. I think maybe you're gonna someone to cut it. Yeah, so we'll let's check around what's going on. Okay, here. We'll come. We'll come look around with you. Klaus is going in a car, he's just scoping the things just to make sure there's no one jumped over the uh, gate or whatever, or no one's inside the actual complex and then me and Sabi, we're just gonna go walk around, look at the electric fence and all that. It's probably the trees that it's putting this one off. Um, you gotta keep uh, the electric fence clear of foliage and trees and all that kind of stuff, otherwise it, they don't work properly and they give false, a lot of false alarms. Well, we both do a lot of the work when the guys are away, uh, so we both got to we got to split the work. Uh, you know, I've got to make sure that he's doing his job and that uh, you know that everything's running smoothly. We're working at our slaves, bosses on holiday. I think we should just take the day off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be the day. <laughs> when they having a holiday, I just have to stay and graft and work my off. So I always get bullied. So what I'm going to do is give some bullying back in the office. As you just know, we like to play games in the office, yeah? <laughs> so I was chasing people around with the taser after I got shocked a couple of times. But I'm gonna shut that thing up your <laughs> and, and <laughs> put it connected to the <laughs> Dude, if you touch me with that thing, dude. <laughs> <Not the f> <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna get my <laughs> Doesn't take uh, jokes too well, eh? He got into his car and he got all kitted out, got his uh, ASP and his pepper spray and stuff. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, the pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thinks he's a bit of a heavy oak. <laughs> Trevor! I think it's time you get out of here, bro. Careful. Uh, the door is locked. Lock on, uh -huh. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you Dave, uh, he's not man, and he's a bit bigger than me, so, <laughs> no. Yeah, you know, sometimes when the boss are away, I, these guys, uh, they go crazy, you know, it's, it's like, it's a punishment for me, for the bosses to leave me alone with these two boys. They are Trevor class, no, 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 man. Breakfast, folks. Jacks! Jacks, breakfast! For Father's Day we did something a little different. We took all of the chairs and tables and uh, the scottle bry into the middle of the bush where we were just surrounded by bush and animals and uh, we decided to have a nice big African champagne breakfast. Even though it was Father's Day, we like to let the ladies chill. We don't like to let them stress out. We like to just do the cooking and all the work. 
Father's Day in the Eblen uh, family is a very special day. Um, we all respect our father very much and we get the same respect from our kids. So uh, it is a special day where we get treated like kings. It's, it's overwhelming the love I, I have for my dad and the love my kids have for me. And the love my kids have for, for my father, you know. Uh, my, my dad is their judo, their, their hero. Cheers. Cheers guys. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to all the fathers and myself. <laughs> <laughs> we did a little uh, present opening uh, ceremony where uh, the three chiefs uh, just sat there in, in the middle of the bush and uh, the kids gave us our presents. It was quite special. It was uh, nice to feel so so loved. Happy Dad's Day! Thanks, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little guy! Look how good, look how good this little guy is. <laughs> oh, thank you, my baby. Look your dad. Soon, Mully is going to be married, and he's going to have some kids of his own. So it's going to be quite special to have a fourth chair next to us on the, so there can be four chiefs, and Mully won't have to go sit on my dad's lap anymore and give him his present. <laughs> <laughs> go get it. All in all, what a great Father's Day. Thanks to my family. I love you guys so much. And Dad, happy Father's Day. Love you, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Zane and John Paul decided to herd, herd them back, back through the bottleneck. And I said to the actually, it's a shit idea. The problem came in when this pool came running from nowhere. <laughs> Came running straight past my dad's car. It was Zayna John Paul's fault for chasing the Elan, for deciding about it. Whose idea was it to chase an Elan through a gap that's two, three meters wide? It was Zayn's night to make the poiki because he had came so late. He was given this uh, mammoth time-consuming task of uh, preparing a poiki. Captain <laughs> Marisela, Captain. <laughs> oh, no. I helped to prepare the stuff for the poiki. He got, then got stuck into it. He slaved away for geez, a good three, four hours on that poiki. I even, I eventually tied out. I went inside. I lay down. I, I tossed a bit. I got woken up when Zane arrived back with the poiki. My boot says I can't cook quickly, so. The camera crew looked hungry, so I made sure. So that was two hours, three hours, three Leave hours, yeah. three hours. Leave the chair. Yeah. You don't have to take it. Not to blow my own horn, but I'm a, I'm a pretty good chef. Getting punished to cook, I mean, I don't know if that's punishment, but yeah, I think my dad thought, well, a poiki takes five hours, so that's a bit of punishment. In saying that, I mean, we sat outside there with the kids and told stories and had a couple of beers. It was actually an, aw an awesome evening. Yeah. When we drove up to the gate, we noticed these three land bulls standing in the bottleneck section of the farm. Mully was in the vehicle with my dad. Uh, me and JP were together. So we were driving down the fence. Uh, my dad stayed in the middle of the bottleneck. I told JP to stop. I jumped out the car. I got, I got underneath the fence just to stay on the other side of the farm. If uh, the Elan decided to run, I'd wave my hands in the air and, and kind of try and chase him the other way. Zane and John Paul decided to herd, herd them back, back through the bottleneck, which our farm is actually sh shaped in a bottleneck. Herd them back through the bottleneck. And I said to them, it's a shit idea, I don't want to do it because you're going to scare the animals and something's going to happen to them. It seemed to work. I mean, the Elan were moved off and they disappeared. Um, the problem came in when this bull came running from nowhere. I mean, he came running straight past my dad's car. I waved my hands at him, I shouted at him. He just dropped his horns and he hit this fence. I mean, if that bull had to hit a car, if he had to hit JP's car at that speed, I mean, he would have flipped JP's car and I'm sure one or two of the guys would have been seriously injured. 
It's amazing. So the effect we lost all three bulls into into my neighbor's farm. I was at a total loss of words when I saw our three prized Ilan bulls jump over the fence. I was so pissed off. What's that like? Fifty grand. Um, Zayn and Muli got into an argument straight away. Muli, why did you guys go that way? The Ilan ran into the fence and did a U turn and ran back. Don't blame it on us now. Don't blame it on us. We we're stopped there. We we're stationary there. The Ilan. Chill there, they ran this way, past us, and up. It was Zayna John Paul's fault for chasing the eland, for deciding about it, for pulling the car right there, disturbing the animals, instead of pulling down the front fence and letting them go through peacefully. Told you, don't chase Dad, the eland. Dad was supposed to come with us behind us, so he would have still been up there. Then they wouldn't have run. They ran to the gap, came straight back up, ran towards you guys here. Whose idea was it to chase an eland through a gap that's two, three meters wide? For sakes, guys, really. When they turned on that fence, we were coming back up. We didn't move. Willie, Willie. Yeah. Let's find Louis to come and see the fence. We've got to find Louis to come see the fence and we're going to have to chase animals back. But when good times go bad, you know, there's a lot of finger pointing and blame game to be passed. But, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, the Elan shouldn't have been in that area and we, we needed to move it down. But what we should have done is open a bigger gap. Muli can say, well, I told you to do this. So why didn't he do it? The, the, the thing is, we all should have stopped, thought about it logically, and then move forward. So if I had to blame anyone, I'd blame all three of us. We got hold of the next door neighbor, and uh, he brought a couple of his guys around, and uh, we, we repaired the fence. You know, people always say things happen for a reason. You know, we, we kind of got too many Elan bulls on the farm. He didn't really have enough Elan bulls on his farm. It's probably why the, the bulls were always pushing to go there, because uh, they could smell cows and stuff. You know, going to the shooting range is always fun with the brothers. You know, we always go there and have competitions with each other, see who's the best shot, see, see what, what's what. I'm shooting too low. Left and low. Where is it? Yeah, I don't know what was going on with my shooting. I was like, I think I had a blindfold and I was still hitting, still hitting the target. I just couldn't hit a bullseye. What's your gun? I'm just going to go dirty up that target and then we can no, stick to you ones. I was just going to shoot on this target. Because it's not, it's not too dirty. <laughs> the bullseye's not dirty. <laughs> bulls. It's another bulls. Jeez, Jay's actually funny, but... The best shot used to be JP, but it seems like Zane's taking it from the title from JP now. <laughs> we had shot off a good couple of hundred rounds, whipped up the shotgun. Is it a good board up, eh? What is it? It's like... No. Oh, jeez, Zane. We were shooting it, another visitor popped in to say how's it to us. It's Oscar. You know, I, I can't have old Oscar in the crossfire here. Just now she gets hit by a stray bullet or something. Oscar! Oscar! So I had to send her packing. God. <laughs> Oscar likes to get rough because he's tame, he's lost his fear of men. So he sees us as just part of his herd, so he likes to get violent with us for pecking order. I woke up in the morning and I came outside and I saw Oscar getting quite frisky with my dad. You know, it, it's kind of, it's nature where, whereby there's a pecking order or there's a hierarchy. So I immediately went and, and obviously stood there and she tried to challenge me and I, I, I just quickly showed her exactly who's boss. What a fantastic weekend away. Uh, what a great time with the kids. What great family bonding time. We really had a special time and it's, it's the sad part of the vacation now to pack up and go back to reality.
No, packing up and leaving the farm is always a bit, um, a bit sad because then we now have to, we have to go back to work. But what an awesome weekend. Thank you, baby. It's time to get back to Joburg and see what fires we need to put out. Bye, la. See you next time, girl. Zane, Klaus and I, we ran all the way to the top. At this point, we heard a commotion and a loud bang and some screaming. Oh my gosh, that's a sign to it! It's quite frightening because normally we don't have to worry about situations like that. Normally it's just Zane, Klaus and I. I'll beat you down, I'll beat you down. Okay, cool. We had a really relaxing weekend at the farm. Back at the grindstone now, ready to bust some criminals. Now that I'm back, it's time to restore order in the office. Hello guys. All the guys just arrived back from the game farm. So it's actually quite relieving. It's all, a lot of pressure is off of my shoulders now. Now they can go deal with their crap and I can just <laughs> chill and get back to my work. I hear you guys have been having a nice time while, uh, while we left the, the office in your hands. How was the trip? Well, it was okay. It's not like I come back to a mess. Well, what's wrong? As much as you like to keep everyone on their toes, I also like to keep you on your toes. Taste the new pepper spray. It's coming out the windows. It's strong, eh? It's coming out the windows. It's coming out the windows. Open the door, open the door. The bro might have been better. Put water, Joe, put water. Lots of water. That's why you did the right thing. Joe was standing there for a while. <laughs> Time for Trevor and Klaus to f***ing around in the office. But as long as you know that I owe you one, eh? I got revenge for Samantha on you, because I have to protect my female staff. So you don't owe me nothing. I'll have to get you one more before you owe me. <laughs> the boss is back. Let's go bust some criminals. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we do we do quite a few construction sites. We're down. Straight. Straight down. What are they guarding the cable? The cable. Mm -hmm. It can get very dangerous um, when you start letting the wrong element creep into uh, these uh, compounds and that. And then eventually you just got a place overrun by criminals. <laughs> we do regular patrols there because obviously it's a new development so what they're busy doing is they're putting in the cabinets, they're putting in the light fittings, they're putting in all the, the extras so these things are actually quite a bit of money for uh, people that resell it. Okay we're just doing uh, some standard patrols here. Um, we come at any time of the night you know especially building sites there's a lot going on. There's, uh, a lot of uh, you know TVs and stuff, but there's a lot of expensive cabling and a lot of uh, bricks and all that kind of stuff, and it's worth a lot of money. Zane was in front of us. We were just doing a drive around the construction site, looking for our guards that were patrolling. We found uh, two of them already, so we were just looking for the third one. So what we do is we come out to site and we just inspect these buildings, um, all these half-built buildings. This, the f is that? Did you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. Tango coming for Zulu Tango. Zulu, send your mic. Jesus, goes nuts. Zulu, send your mic. Cut yeah. the lights, cut the lights, cut the lights, cut the lights. We were on the way to the building and uh, we saw a light in one of the top uh, units. 
We stopped the vehicle. I thought it was maybe one of the guards doing a routine inspection through the building. But as I shouted to him, he switched his torch off and he kind of disappeared. That's good. Turn the light off. It's definitely someone in that building. From the light going off, we knew that it couldn't be the guard. Probably the guard would walk to the window and then uh, speak over the walkie talkie and just say, Hi, boss, it's me and everything. But this didn't happen. The light went off. So from that, we already knew something was happening. We ran into the building, uh, the team kind of split in the building, we, we searched room by room. We knew that the light went off at the top floor, so Zane, Klaus and I, we ran all the way to the top to try to apprehend the suspect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's move to the next, next apartment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sweep the top floor and there's nothing. A rookie error. We should, have, we should have started from the ground floor up uh, to shake him out. So we went straight to the second floor. This room's clear. We missed him. He must have gone down. Come, 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 come. Go. Go. Yeah, clear, clear, clear. At this point, we heard a commotion and a loud bang, and oh my God, that's a sign to it. The sound guy actually fell from second story uh, to the bottom. It was quite scary. We all basically gathered there. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay, he's okay. Get the suspect. Jim, Jim, go, go, go. When the sound guy got injured, it, it was quite, it was quite frightening because normally we don't have to worry about situations like that. Normally it's just Zane, Klaus, and, and I in the building. So now with the filming and everything, we have to worry about extra people and. Unfortunately, the, uh, the sound guy got hurt this time. Once we had made sure the sound guy wasn't critical and he was okay, he was conscious and communicating, uh, we left class behind and me and Trev gave chase. Hey, come into the window. We had seen the guy jump through a window on the next building. So what we did was, um, we went through the same window. Yeah, clear, clear. Clear, clear. Clear, clear. Clear, clear. 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 I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling. He's gone up the stairs and he's hiding on top here. He knows he's not going to try to smoke. Okay. Clear, clear. Clear, We made our way through the building. Me and Trev went up, uh, we cleared it level by level. Trev, for f***ing sakes. Oh, your foot, you look like a f***ing f***. Clear. This is over. Down there, down there. there was a massive amount of scaffolding on the side. I said to Trev, the guy must have gone down the scaffolding. When I looked out the window, I saw him running down the um, construction site to the next complex. Be careful, Zane, be careful. The quickest way down was for me to jump off the scaffolding. We were on the third story, so Trev was himself a little bit. I'll beat you down, I'll beat you down. Okay, cool. Thank God there was sand down there to break my fall. I think he expected me to follow him down, but 
I wasn't gonna follow him down, it's quite a, quite a high jump from the third story. So I went down the stairs, I ran uh, down all six flights of stairs. I ran past Klaus and the sound guy. Okay, we just wanna clean those screens a little bit. It's an antiseptic on that. Are you sure you're not hurting anyone else? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, huh? Just feel, just give yourself like a bit of a feel, you know, sometimes the shock you don't feel where you all, where you hurt yourself. Oh, this looks pretty deeper. I gave chase, but the guy was long gone. He had gone over the fence into the next complex. <laughs> I'm rolling with you, bro. Sunk us, bro. I can't believe you jumped that. No. Just be careful, bro. How did he, he jump there, bro? He jumped, bro. He jumped so fast. We made contact with the guards next door, but they had seen or heard nothing. We lost the suspect, but uh, we did we did well. At least the guy knew that we were there. We chased him a bit, and we showed the guy that he mustn't come back. He's gonna get caught if he comes back. Bro, I'm time, bro. Okay, it's at the other complex. It's a roll, bro. At the end of the day, the sound guy got hurt, but at least he wasn't badly hurt. We didn't have to take him to hospital or anything. Just got a couple of scratches on his hands and his knees because he landed on his knee. And the suspect didn't get away with anything, so thank goodness. Okay. Yeah. You're not feeling cold, eh? Suddenly we get a call from Zane. He's tailing a suspect slowly. The suspect sees that uh, he's in fact been followed and the chase starts. Our boom closures were put on high alert uh, for a vehicle delivering drugs in the area and we got a call for backup into one of our boomed areas. He wouldn't answer, he wouldn't come out, so we thought he was scared. So what we did was we pepper sprayed the room. And on this particular occasion, these vagrants attacked the security guard. We're on our way back with our tactical team. We've got five vehicles behind us. Before we got there, we heard that one of our guys was bleeding from the head like he got hit with a rock. When we got there, a whole lot of guys just started scattering because they knew that we came in force and we weren't taking Move, come. Come, get out here, come. Sit down. Hold him, hold him, hold him. Get him, get him, get him. 